rather be other than Lexington, Kentucky? It's the conference opener for both the Gators and the Wildcats. Last year, 53 weeks ago, Kentucky snapped a 31-game losing streak against Florida. Terry Wilson ran for one score in the third quarter and passed a 54-yard touchdown to Lynn Bowden, Jr. The Cats beat Florida 27-16. They did it at the Swamp, and that indeed left a mark. It's been 42 years since Kentucky's beaten Florida twice in a row. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Brian Greasy. I'm Steve Levy. Mark Stoops has a steadfast rule. He doesn't look back to last season or last week. He's making an exception because of this victory a year ago. A 10-win team. Where do they go from here yeah, now? Yeah, 10-3 and three a year ago. It was a historic year for Mark Stoops in Kentucky. But he said, listen, I didn't come to Kentucky to build a team. I came to build a program. And you have to follow up that historic year this year. We're going to find out a lot about this Kentucky team tonight against a Florida team that has designs on the SEC East. When Kentucky put their tickets on sale, they sold out one game in advance. Bam, this is the one. We've got McGrath and McShay. That's Todd and Molly down on the field. Well, Steve, it's hard to believe Kentucky hasn't beaten Florida at home since 1986. And this team has a chip on their shoulder. One of their captains, Logan Stenberg, told me, everyone's focusing on the players we don't have, but we have a lot of talent on this team. And we're out here to prove that last year was not a fluke time. And they've got to do it tonight with a backup quarterback. Sawyer Smith is stepping in. He's thrown nine passes for Kentucky. Terry Wilson was the starter. Now Sawyer Smith comes in. I'll tell you what, I was impressed with how poised he was on tape in those nine passes we saw, and then how poised he was when we met with this young man. And he's already developed some sort of leadership, which is surprising. He's only been here for two months. What a huge spot for Sawyer Smith. What a spot on a Saturday night. Sawyer Smith, the grad transfer from Troy. And he'll have to wait a little longer to get the football. Kentucky won the toss, and they choose to defer. That's Grant McKinnis, Freddie Swain, and Tyree Cleveland are back for the Gators. Ninth-ranked Florida at 2-0. Kentucky at 2-0. We'll have some fun tonight. And they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. The much maligned Felipe Franks, full of raw emotion and plenty of talent. What will be on display this evening? Yeah, he's got to he's play calm. He's got to calm down. He's an emotional player. We saw the end of the Miami game. He didn't play his, his best ball in the fourth quarter, and that's really been his Achilles heel. You come into this road and this environment, everybody on floor is talking revenge, but Felipe Franks needs to play with a level head tonight. First down and 10. Out of the 25. LaMichael Pirine, the lone setback. Franks, the pitch to the left. Piran will make a couple people miss. Gain a one. Cash Daniel made the stop. Back to Todd McShay. And talk about the, the impact players. And you got to look at offensively what Florida wants to do. Michael Piran is going to be the guy. You see him number two. They need to run the football effectively. And Cash Daniel already. He's really the heart and soul of this defense, number 56 at that linebacker position for Kentucky. Impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Off the play fake, Franks to throw, and overthrew one target, and Trayvon Grimes comes down with it. You tell me if that was his intended target. I think he threw it in the general direction to either one of those guys, but he was getting hit in the chops, Felipe Franks was. He got the blitz off the edge, and you take a pick. <laughs> Don't ever ask hey, you know, for clarification for the quarterback. It's a gain of 18. That's what you need there to you know. Go. Pirine picking and choosing, approaching midfield. DeAndre Square makes his second stop of the game after a game of four. So Todd mentioned that Florida needs to run the football. They, they haven't been very good up front. That's been the problem for Dan Mullen. This is an offensive line that is green at best. They got abused by the Miami Hurricanes in the first game. But I agree with Mullen. Their best players are their outside wide receivers. So they got to get the football to those guys in their hands. 
right now all the way outside, split out top of your screen. That's the back, LaMichael Piran. Cats rush for some pressure. It's caught. Kyle Pitts, the tight end, for 15 and a first down. Felipe Franks, when he's comfortable in the pocket and has a room to throw, he's very good throwing the ball downfield. Look at this. It's great anticipation, getting that ball out under pressure. It's a good throw and catch. All sorts of protection. Now Franks off his back foot towards the end zone. It's intercepted. Tyrell Agent on the return for Kentucky. Franks threw it up for grabs. And Agent brought it down. There's a fine line between making a play as a quarterback and making a mistake. And Felipe Franks, he's going to get in a situation where he's got time. He's looking around. Okay, extend the play. Now, in this situation right here, you got to be smart, right? Here, here comes the safety. He's going to come over just playing Felipe Franks. And Agent plays out like a punt. Now, that's that's giving up three points, Todd. Yeah, and what we've talked about, Brian, as we studied him, physically he has everything. He has a huge arm. He's mobile. But mentally, he's just got to become a better decision maker. Not a great start, obviously, for Franks. Off the quick change, Sawyer Smith wants people to know he can run with the football. And he takes off gain of four. Well, a good, good situation for Sawyer Smith to step into after a turnover, kind of settle the nerves. Okay, we're, we got the ball in good field position. We're talking with him yesterday. He said, you know, I think everybody's going to think that I can't run. So he is going to pull the ball in zone reach tonight. That's Bowden in motion. He's got the football. Lynn Bowden Jr. very close to the marker be about a third down and one I know you're checking your your program guide Lynn Bowden traditionally wears uniform number one he is sporting the number three of his fallen starting quarterback Terry Wilson tonight that'd be interesting to see the energy level of Kentucky in this offense early right their, their leader unquestioned leader there he is Terry Wilson that was emotional when he went down last week uh, they managed to, to Pull that win out, obviously, but an emotional fumble snap. Smith trying to jump on it. That ball is still loose, and Florida says they have it. Let's see. Wow. How did the Gators come away with that one? You talk about mistakes of quarterbacks, right? An interception, obviously, by Frank's mistake. This one didn't look like Sawyer Smith was ready for that snap. He turned his head trying to hand it off, and right there, you just got to pounce on it. Fall down on it. Don't try to pick it up and make a play. Just get on the football and secure it. A uh, mistake by the young quarterback. Brad Stewart able to jump on it for Florida. Stewart had missed suspension for the first two games of the season for not living up to that Gator standard. He's back in the lineup tonight and makes a big play recovering the fumble. And so we trade turnovers three and a half minutes into the game. At the Kentucky 31, P. Ryan. Patient runner. Gain of three on the play, second and seven. Here's Asian right here. You're going to see this is the interception. Excuse me. Asian is back now, 23 in the middle of the field. You're trying to make a play, trying to make a play. Right here, you throw it out of bounds. You know, you just can't heave one down there like a Hail Mary on the first drive of the game. Second and seven. It's P. Ryan to his left. Maybe one. DeAndre Square off to a big start for Kentucky. He, along with Cash Daniel, the heart and soul of that Wildcats defense. And then they get support from the defensive line. You know, talking with Mark Stoops last night, he said the strength of our team is this defensive front seven. We need to rely on them early in this game, and they've been put in a difficult position after the turnover.
Third and six. That's the back Piran top of your screen. Three receivers to the bottom. And Franks wants to run for it. Squirts through there somehow and gets the first down, making something out of nothing. Brandon Eccles finally got him, but not until the nine yard pickup. Nice block by the right guard, Bleich. 67 right there on the linebacker, and that frees up Felipe Franks at 240 pounds. Why not run him 10 or 12 times in a game, especially in critical third down and short situations? Fresh set of downs now from the 18 of Kentucky. Franks to throw for it and complete to Kyle Pitts. Close to another first down. Jamari Brown able to force him out. Throwing this ball a lot to the left with Felipe Franks and especially to the tight end Pitts. I think that's the third time he's targeted him. And in the red zone, your tight end could be your best friend as a quarterback. Second down and four. Pitch to Piran. Nothing doing. Calvin Taylor, the stop. And the run defense has been excellent. Well, it comes to Piran anyway. Third down upcoming. Franks had got 157 consecutive pass attempts without an interception before throwing that pick. But we've traded turnovers in the first three and a half, and the Gators are knocking at the door. See here, big third down. It's a little bit long for a, a running play with, with Franks. So expect Mark Stoops and defensive coordinator Brad White for Kentucky maybe to heat up Franks if he makes another mistake. Oh, wow. A little over eager. Free play. No, they got to blow it dead. T.J. Carter jumped for Kentucky. Well, this is going to be a first down. What a, what a mistake by Carter. Just giving them points. On a third and five. Before the snap, offside defense, number 15. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That changes the whole situation, too, because now you can run the football of your Florida, and I think that's what they want to do, especially with Franks at the quarterback spot. No question, Todd. If you're Kentucky, you got to keep the pressure on Franks. He's already thrown one interception. Now a big third down, and you're just giving, giving it away. Those are the, the death by inches, right? First and goal from the eight. They're checking from the sideline. Dan Mullen counting the box, whether he wants to run or throw the bubble to the bottom of the screen. Three to snap it. Get it away. Frank's going to take off. All sorts of trouble. It's a loss of two on the play, and it's Cash Daniel, the first member of Big Blue Nation to get there. Great job by Cash Daniel. Watch, he's going to come up, and he's going to play off the block of the pulling guard. 61, boom. Then he gets just enough of Felipe Franks until the rest of his crew shows up. And it looks so easy, right? But to be able to get your hands in there, get off of the block, and to be able to make the play, it's really good good tackling and just good football by Cash. Cash with a K. <laughs> Cash is king. That's my dad always told me. Second and goal. <laughs> Franks to throw for it and couldn't squeeze it through. Trayvon Grimes, Jamari Brown, and Yusuf Corker on the coverage. And there is a flag down. Boy, Yusuf Corker came in and, and he he lowered the boom on Grimes. It looked like he hit him, obviously hit him in the head or neck area. And by definition, Grimes is a defenseless player. Personal foul targeting defense number 29. The previous play is under further review. Dangerous looking play here. Yeah, that's that's the definition. He, he hits him with the crown of the helmet. Right in the face. Corker has been among the most consistent defensive backs for Kentucky. They might have just lost him for the rest of this game. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 29 is disqualified. It was already a brand new starting secondary for Kentucky, and now they lose Yusef Corker. 
for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's a big loss for Kentucky. He was the, their most consistent player in the secondary. You know, talking with Mark Stoops, he was kind of like the Mike Edwards of last year, right? He plays every single snap, and they're going to have to adjust. You can see he knew right after, right? He pounds the ground. And that's that's tough, right? That, that is so quick. It happens so fast, and safeties are at such risk for getting thrown out of game. So now it's a, a true freshman, and Taj Dodson's got to step up. First and goal from the five. Franks wants to keep it. Turns the corner. There is a flag down. Franks. And it's a touchdown. We'll check the marker. They're going to get a hold on the offensive line for Florida. And this is going to come back. What a huge penalty. You go from a, from a, putting six points on the board to now being in a backed up situation. Holding offense number nine. Two yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Is right here. Sometimes when you get this, the ball that kicks outside, and you can see right there, you got the hand. That's a good call. He's got that hand out there. When that ball bounces, tight ends are at risk of being engaged and holding on the edge. Keon Zipperer. They push him all the way back to the 15. Where it remains first and goal. P. Ryan has not been able to find any daylight. DeAndre Square already his fifth tackle. Greece, if I can just go back to the targeting, I'd like you look at that again. That penalty is to protect the defensive yeah. player, right. not the offensive player. Corker got the worst of that exchange. The potential for the most damage is to that player who initiates the target. And it's worth pointing out this season, that is the first of the season of targeting for Corker. Once you get to three, that's a full game suspension, and it will continue to add on. Second and goal from the 15. Franks to throw for it. Got a man wide open. It's caught. Touchdown. Freddie Swain, 15 yards with the score, and the Gators make it look easy there. You lose some veteran in the secondary in Corker, and right off the bat, Dan Mullen is going to come, and he's going to challenge. It's just a, a, a wheel route here to the outside. You see that the corner goes with him. Nobody goes with Swain to the corner of the end zone. A breakdown in that secondary for Kentucky, and an easy touchdown for Franks. That'll take some air out of the building. Six and a half to go in the first quarter. Evan McPherson is on for the extra point and puts it through. A couple of turnovers. Teams traded turnovers. Only Florida's got a touchdown. Nissan Heisman House Tour in Lexington this week. Fans have had the opportunity to meet ESPN personalities and former college football greats like Andrew Woodson, Kentucky, and Tim Couch, former number one pick overall to the Cleveland Browns. Lynn Bowden from the three. Spins around, and he's out to the 21-yard line. Matt Barry in the studio tonight. Steve Levy, good evening. We have our All-State Mayhem moment. Overtime, BYU-USC. After BYU had already kicked the field goal, they get the interception to win it. Their first win against a ranked Pac-12 team since 2009. Matt will keep you updated on everything going on in college football here tonight. Boy, the Pac-12 is taking it on the chin today. Huh? Stanford got beat up by UCF. Just today? Colorado lost to Air Force. Just today? Sawyer Smith throwing and completing. It's Bowden. A marker comes out. Steve Marlowe is our referee tonight. Mm -hmm. 
Ineligible receiver downfield, offense number 83. He was covered. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. It's interesting talking with the coaching staff for, for Kentucky and, and how Sawyer Smith ended up getting here to Lexington. You know, they had a couple of backup quarterbacks to Terry Wilson last year and Gunnar Hoke and Danny Clark both transferred. Uh, Clark went to a junior college and Gunnar Hoke transferred to Ohio State. And they said, listen, we got to go get a quarterback for to back up Terry Wilson. And that's when they went out and got Sawyer Smith. And they said it was a perfect fit because he came in and said, I'm not trying to be the starting quarterback. I could be a backup to Terry. Had the right attitude. First down and 15. On the ground, A.J. Rose, and he's swung back. Forward progress to give us two yards. Down to Molly. Well, Steve, Sawyer Smith taking all the blame and showing frustration on the sideline after that fumbled snap, but Terry Wilson stood by his side to calm him down. Wilson told me he wasn't even supposed to be on the sideline, but insisted, saying, I need to be there for Sawyer, especially early in the game so he can get into a groove, but said he won't be down here in the second half because he said once Sawyer gets into a groove, he's really hard to stop, Steve. Watch for that. After the marker, second and 13. Sawyer pressure, didn't feel it, and he is sacked. And the football comes out. And this time, Sawyer Smith able to recover the fumble. Jonathan Grenard came off the edge untouched. Right, if you're, you're going to block one player for Florida, you better block number 58. He's new to this team, but he is not new to sacking quarterbacks. He is an outstanding football player and probably the best pass rusher on this Florida team. And Sawyer Smith's lucky he didn't drop that football. A couple of years ago, 15 and a half sacks to lead the team. Last season hurt his wrist on the first defensive series of the season at Louisville. So you know he has that potential. How about third and 21, Doctor? What do you got here? Florida just rushing three. Sawyer Smith will loft one and is caught for the first down. Ahmad Wagner for 24. They needed 21 against 24. Wow. That's the play call. Well, no, this is this is Sawyer Smith after fumbling the ball twice already in this game. Not not buckling under pressure. That's a big time throw in between three Florida defenders for the first down. All right, they'll go Wildcat here with Lynn Bowden. He can throw the football. We'll watch for that. Alex to keep it. Pick up a yard on the play. David Reese, the middle linebacker, makes the stop after a one-yard gain by Lynn Bowden. Todd. Brian, how gutsy was that throw? Oh, big time. I mean, I'm standing behind him, and it, he thought for a second. You could tell. His eyes kind of dropped for a split <laughs> second. He was thinking about, oh, I'm just going to pick up a few and we'll punt and get away. And then to have the guts to make that throw, that, that shows you a lot about him in terms of his patience and just trusting his offensive line. Coming through. A.J. Rose for a one-yard gain. It'll bring up a third down. Grease back to Gunnar Hoke and Danny Clark and the transfer portal. Yep. They're, they're watching the show tonight thinking, you know what? If I stick around, I'm the starting quarterback here. You know, it's, it's a product of where we are right now in college football. It's a kind of a microwave uh, situation. Everybody wants to be the starting quarterback yesterday, right? And imagine being, you know, Mark Stoops as a head coach. You got two backup quarterbacks that, that can play. Those guys can play. And they decide to take off, and it, it's a mistake, right? It, if they were still here, they'd be playing. Gunnar Holtz, a third-string quarterback yeah. at Ohio State. Here's third and eight. Sawyer Smith. Some more magic. Josh Ali. That gave a 10 on the play. It's funny, talking to the Kentucky coaches, Greece, first down efficiency is going to be a big deal. Don't want to be in third and long, right? But so far on this drive, they've been able to get out of it. Yeah, and, you know, mark that, that third down throw to Ahmad Wagner because that, that has the potential to settle Sawyer Smith into this game. That was a confident throw there on third down, a perfect read and good execution. Sawyer Smith. Three for three, 38 yards. Don't let the two fumbles fool you. Up high to Ali. Here's Josh Ali making people miss. Inside the 40 and the football comes out. Sean Davis made the stop. Dan Mullins going wild thinking that was a fumble. It's a game of 18. Yeah, he thinks it was a fumble. Let's take another look. Ali gets hit. 
No, that's the right call. That forearm was down. That was not a fumble. Great play call there. Love that play call. You get the third down completion, get a first down, and you keep Florida on their heels defensively by calling a little slip screen. That's Eddie Grand, their offensive coordinator. He's uh, been successful in getting his quarterback into a rhythm, and now he's challenging Florida. They completely abandoned the running game. It's Bowden off the pass play. Put him in a second and short scenario, gain a seven. Good looking drive by the Cats. Ninth play of the drive upcoming. Way back when, it was a third and 21 from their own 10-yard line. Now they go to the run. A.J. Rose trying to push the pile very, very close. And he will have first down yardage. The forward progress gets him there. As we hit the final minute, quarter number one. It's interesting watching Kentucky operate. You know, you had a lot of questions without Terry Wilson. What is this offense going to look like? Last year it was run heavy with Benny Snell, Terry Wilson. And now with a different quarterback, you see the adjustment that Eddie Grant and Mark Stoops are making. They're throwing the football more to open up the run game. A complete 180 from what they've been the last year. That's Bowden in motion. Don't give it to him. It's Rose instead. Stumbles forward for a yard. And the clock will wind. I think it's important also to mention that this Florida defense not playing with their best defender in C.J. Henderson, the corner. So it makes sense for Kentucky to come out and challenge this secondary. You know they're stout up front with Florida front seven, but they're down their best player in the secondary. The two schools with the longest active winning streaks in the SEC, Florida and Kentucky, one quarter complete. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN, presented by Hampton, by Hilton. As you get some Mike Schwab directed beautiful pictures from Lexington. 7 0 in favor of Florida as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, and Molly McGrath as we open up quarter number two. And the Wildcats are on the move. Second and nine at the Florida 26. The Wildcats run some Wildcat. And Bowden will keep it and try to turn the edge. And David Reese wasn't falling for that. No gain on the play. Third down and nine. I understand you want to get the ball in your best player's hands, and that's Bowden. So you're going to get him a couple five, six rushes out of the Wildcat. But the horizontal run game against this Florida defense, it's not going to work because they're just too fast, too athletic, sideline to sideline. Smith has been perfect. Twelfth play of this drive coming up that started from their own 10 after a penalty. Here's some Florida pressure. Smith gets it away. Ahmad Wagner couldn't pull it down. There's a penalty marker. Touchdown. I beg your pardon. Juggle and get caught. Ball. They'll wow. take a closer look. It looked like that ball hit the ground and came back up to him. We'll obviously take another look at that, but what tremendous concentration from Wagner at 6'5. He had the height advantage to go up and make that play. The former basketball player from the University of Iowa that decided to give football a shot. Really on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. And even if it doesn't stand, what flag. an effort. Well, and it's a flag, too, right? At the worst case scenario for Kentucky, this will be a first down. You see Marco Wilson had his hand all on his face mask. Now, that ball moved a little bit. To me, it looked like it moved a little bit when he came down on the ground and helped him to complete that catch. 
Wow. SEC referee, Matt Austin, our ESPN rules expert tonight. Maddie, what do you think? I, I think he gained control of that ball with the one hand on the way down and got his other hand underneath it. Yes, it looked like it moved a little bit, but I think his arm was moving along with it. So I think that's a catch and should stand as a touchdown. And again, that is the call on the field. So a lot to unpack there because there is a penalty marker as well, which would be pass interference, we believe, against Marco Wilson. Yeah, again, you know, what Matt said there, he's, he thought he controlled the ball when he was going to the ground. And the ball can move right after touching yes. the ground, but it can't help you make the catch. And I think, you know, based off what they called on the field, you might be right. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Matt's e one for one. Even better. What a grab. Ahmad Wagner, full marks. And how appropriate, how appropriate is it that the basketball team that comes walking out of the tunnel right as that catch is made, the power forward at wide receiver? Calipari might want to get to <laughs> Wagner signed up. I don't think he has a talent shortage. Chance poor. For the extra point. And a big time throw right from Sawyer Smith. There's the hoop team. Those guys couldn't have done that any better. But what a job by Sawyer Smith. Identified the man to man coverage on Marco Wilson and knew he had the matchup with the 6 5 receiver out there. Gave him an opportunity, a chance, and it paid off. You know Coach Cal is very well aware. Before playing football for the Wildcats, Ahmad Wagner spent three seasons hooping it up for Iowa. Earned the team's most improved player, the inaugural Kenny Arnold Hawkeye Spirit Award as a sophomore. The Kentucky basketball team is in the house on the left, and Wagner is enjoying it after making what was a circus catch in the end zone for a touchdown. And getting us to 7-7. I think he made the right choice. <laughs> I'll say. The best choice right now is to go to Matt Barry. Steve Levy, thank you. The AT&T best performance of the day on what otherwise was a bad day for the Pac-12. Arizona State down late. Eno Benjamin gives him the lead 10-7. After 12 been on the field for Michigan State, they had to kick another field goal to tie it. Matt Coglin misses it. And Herm Edwards beats Michigan State two years in a row. Unbelievable there. Now Michigan State was, you know, everybody thought, a lot of people thought they'd be challenging Ohio State and the Big Ten East. Yeah. And they might still, right? Well, like we know these college teams. The first month of the season is sometimes a little rocky. Sparty scores seven at home. That's my takeaway. I saw that, yep. Cross the middle and complete Van Jefferson. Hits the sheet. It's a gain of 32. Now, big time answer from Felipe Franks. Kentucky comes out on offense and ties this game, and Felipe Franks gives Van Jefferson an opportunity on the post route over the top of Jamari Brown. Well done. Now the pressure. Can't get out of there. Football is loose and blue jumps on it it's Taj Dotson Dotson the replacement for the ejected Yusef Corker the true freshman from Union City Georgia hops on the football and Kentucky's got it huge turnover for Kentucky Great rush from the edge. That ball is definitely out. You can see the arm was coming forward, but the ball went backward, which tells you that the ball was out before Felipe Franks was coming forward. And Franks was a little bit ginger coming up there, too. He walked off the uh, field. Might be an even bigger loss for Florida. Looks like he's all right. I think that's the fourth fumble of the game. It's definitely the third turnover of the game. And now we'll see what Kentucky can do with it. From their own 46 in a 7-7 game.
on the ground. Terrassier smoke. His first carry, gain of five on the play. This is an opportunity for Kentucky on the offensive side to really take control of this game. You know, their, their offensive line has been the strength of, of their team. You know, Logan Stenberg, the left guard, Drake Jackson, the center, those two guys coming back. Landon Young, the left tackle, was hurt a year ago, but he was going to be the starter. So that left three on that offensive line, they need to lean on them. If they're going to win this football game. Second down and five. Sawyer Smith loads up and completes. Justin Rigg, the tight end. And Sawyer Smith is getting on that roll that Terry Wilson pointed out. When he gets hot, here he is. Yep. Grease that last touchdown drive. Kentucky converted third and 21, third and eight, and third and nine to keep that going. And it was big time throws from Sawyer Smith having protection in the pocket. You know, we watched Florida's defense annihilate Miami's offense, but this offensive line has protected him in this game. I'll let you know when Sawyer Smith misses one. Here's Smoke trying the right side on first down to gain a five on the play. Cavassier Smoke. Cavassier is his first name. He prefers to just go by Smoke. I don't think he has an issue actually with the name. His issue is that people can't pronounce it correctly. <laughs> just stick with Smoke. When right? they announce him in the stadium on the public address, they just say Smoke. Surprised you didn't go with the weather Smoke. Come on, Chris. That's for other guys, Dion. <laughs> I'm way beyond that. Smoke behind the left guard. Smoke. What's better than smoke is a name? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's a first down. Got enough. Kentucky's staying ahead of the down and distance, right? They're throwing the ball on first down and second down. They're running it on, on third and short situations, getting first down. They are. Eddie Grant is calling a great game, and Todd Grantham now, the well-heralded defensive coordinator, his head coach called him the best coordinator in the, in the land. He's got to make the adjustment. Sawyer Smith complete, and there's yards after the catch. It's Drew Schlegel. The senior tight end for a gain of 12. We mentioned no C.J. Henderson at corner tonight for the Gators. He's hurt. Marco Wilson, number three, has got to step up. He gave up the touchdown to Ahmad Wagner. It was a penalty even if he didn't catch it, and now he just missed that tackle for another first down. And, Brian, it's been interesting to watch. They've been rotating Florida has their defensive backs every three or four plays, so clearly they're trying to find the right rotation in the right group. Yeah, Ty, they got three true freshmen on the other side. Smith showing the wheels. Maybe one. Marco Wilson able to force him out. Wilson is the redshirt sophomore corner. He was injured in the third play of the game a year ago against Kentucky. Those are the only three snaps that Dan Mullins been able to have Wilson and C.J. Anderson together in SEC play. And that's really been an issue. Henderson is expected back shortly. Possibly they'll have them next week for the game at the Swamp against Tennessee. Now sometimes you lose a corner like that and your defense can become predictable because you got to protect young corners, young freshmen out there. Second down and eight. Here's Smoke. For three. The injuries for Florida. We told you about C.J. Henderson. He's the key on the defensive end in terms of injuries. No Kadarius Tony, one of the big play players for the Gators. He's out, shoulder injury, and it doesn't look like it's a week-to-week -week thing with Tony. That could be multiple weeks for the Gator. Another Third big down five. Down. Yeah. yeah, another big one for Sawyer Smith from the 16. Gators rushing five. There's some green in front of Sawyer if he wants it. And Smith will run for the first down. Sawyer Smith looking very much in control here tonight. Well, he, he had a lot of room here, Steve, but it didn't look like he knew where the first down was necessarily because he just barely got past it. Had a lot of green grass. He's trying to make a play. And then when you get here, like, maybe maybe get it by uh, two yards, you know, not by half a yard. Cut a little too close that for way, you. Look how close that yes. was. They can get a first down still. 
Smoke. Got some running room. Cavassier, Smoke. Down to the goal line. <laughs> Shy of the marker, I think. What a block by Logan Stenberg into the left guard. This is the definition of pancake. I mean, he just completely destroys the defensive end and opens up that hole for Smoke. Wow. 322 pounds. He's a man. That's an NFL guard right there. And he's nasty and he talks trash. He'll let you hear about it. First down and goal. Here's Smoke crashing down. A flag is in the back of the end zone. Didn't get there. They got a free play there because Florida had 12 men on the field. Looked like Luke Ankrum, the backup defensive end, was trying to get off the field and didn't make it in time. That's smart by Sawyer Smith to snap that ball. See him right here. That's Ankrum. Illegal substitution defense. 12 players on the field. Half the distance to the goal. First down. But you know the little things, right? Like you tell quarterbacks, listen, if you see a defender trying to get off, get up there and snap it. It's a free play. And that, that, that's what's impressed me the most, quite frankly, about Sawyer Smith. Is the stage has not been too big for him. The first time, you know, with this team leading out of the tunnel, uh, and he's been up to the task. While at Troy, he got to play at Clemson, so he experienced that Death Valley play a little bit. First down and goal, about six inches out. Here's Smoke trying to pound it in. Didn't get there. David Reese in the middle for Florida. Reese has been the top Gators defender so far tonight. And now some pushing and shoving. Yeah, it looked like the ball came out there. And you see Smoke, he says, run it again, run it again. But he <laughs> met Reese in the hole, and Reese, he wasn't thinking about any smoke. He said, I'm going to be the fire on this one. So, again, Sawyer Smith played in some big spots. He was on the team redshirting in the stadium for that crazy upset that Troy had over LSU. And again, played at Clemson a season ago. But now he's at the controls. Second down and goal. Under center was Smith. Touchdown. Touchdown, Kentucky. I think Terry Wilson can go up to the uh, press box now. I think Sawyer Smith's in the ball game. 7.46 to go. The extra point is all the way and good. We talked about the best part of this Kentucky team was that offensive line. Jackson, Stenberg, take a look. You want to play on the goal line, Lee? You got to stick your head in there and push into the end zone as good as you can do it. Let's take a look at our Corona premier moment. 53 weeks ago, Kentucky snapped a 31 year losing streak against Florida, led by Terry Wilson running and passing. Benny Snell, 175 yards. And there's Cash Daniels. Man knows how to celebrate. Those weren't Coronas. <laughs> but you get the idea. Our Corona premier moment a year ago. And again, it's been 42 years if you want to look ahead. The last time Kentucky beat Florida in consecutive games. 7.46 left in this first half. Wildcats by a touchdown. Starting guard Luke Fortner is a mechanical engineer major helped design a push cart to provide a Kentucky Children's Hospital patient a chance to move the company the Wildcats on the catwalk and attend the game at Clover Field. Good on you Luke Fortner and this week 10 year old Audrey Jacina from Nicholsville Kentucky joined the catwalk. Audrey was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes but she's now able to manage it. And good for you Luke. And good for you Audrey. Here are the Gators. 
That's a great story. Luke, Luke's doing a great job off the field, and yeah. he's doing a great job on the field tonight because this offensive line for Kentucky has opened up some big holes. I heard Todd McShay say on SEC Nation that this Wildcats offensive line is the best in the SEC. Oh, you weren't supposed to be watching. Oh, uh, sorry. You knew that was on no, the air. Listen, I mean, they, they're making you look good, they're Tom. Up there, they're up there, and they play well together. They may not be the most talented. You can look at Georgia and maybe Alabama, but in terms of the way they play together, so impressed with this group. Mark Stoops said it. he thought it was the best that they've been up front. Yes. And the best unit overall positional group on this Kentucky team. Now on defense, trying to protect the lead. It's Pirine. Got the first down, needed one, got four. Cordell Looney. To me, to me, that's the biggest difference in this Kentucky team, right? Is both the offensive and defensive lines. What do we always say in the SEC, right? The games are won Speed. in the trenches. Speed and fast. No, no. We talk about the trenches. Oh, trenches. Offensive and defensive lines, right? And Kentucky, when you put on the film, on both sides of the ball, yeah. they have SEC fronts. I thought the Big Ten was all about the trenches. What's the Big Ten about then? No? Uh, three yards in a cloud of dust. It depends where you are, right? <laughs> Franks pulls it down. Some late pressure coming. Franks improvising and completing all sorts of time. Trayvon Grimes coming back to make a play for his quarterback. Gain of 32. You know, Felipe Franks made a poor decision early in the game in the same situation. He didn't let it get him down. Keep your eyes downfield. And you see Grimes open up wide open in the middle of the field. It's a nice job. At the Kentucky 31, six minutes to go in the half. Franks to throw out to the right, some blocking in front of Freddie Swain. And he's very close to the marker. We send it back to Matt Barry. Okay, guys, over on ABC, Clemson and Syracuse. Syracuse, of course, has been a thorn in the Tigers' side the last couple of years. Trevor Lawrence to Amari Rogers, 16 yards. Clemson driving again, up 7-0 early on Syracuse. The Orange figure to be in tough tonight. Tough spot for them. Second and short. I would take a shot here, Greece, if it was me. Yep. I'm an aggressive play caller, as you know. Noted. At the Kentucky 20. Franks, pressure coming from the outside. It's picked up. Franks will take off. He's got running room inside the 10-5, and he will walk in untouched. There is a penalty marker down as Felipe Franks pranced into the end zone. Holding That's Gene Delance, the right tackle. They're going to get for the hole. There he is right here. Let's see if it, if this hold happens when Franks leaves the pocket. He's got he's got a hold of the corner, and there that's where he's when he's trying to disengage there, and then he puts his hands up. That's that's a good call. Delance didn't need to do that. He's blocking the corner that blitzed, and he's a big guy, right? An offensive tackle like you don't need to do that. You don't need to hold a corner. And there's the veteran leader of that offensive line, the fifth-year senior Nick Buchanan, getting a hold of Delance. Trying to straighten things out. Takes away a great play by Felipe Franks. You know, that's what's lost in this. Didn't give up on it and used his legs. Got to put it aside now. Franks has got to put it aside, get back into the situation of the game, second and ten, and manage this situation. And run it off the field. But they call the timeout. He's going to move hash marks with the spotting of the football. Both teams have their full complements of timeouts. We've had one incomplete pass in the whole game to this point. Piran, top of your screen. Some pressure up the middle, trying to set it up. That should be grounding. 
We'll that's, see if a flag comes out. That should be intentional grounding. I mean, he's he's in the pocket and he threw that ball to nobody. I'm surprised that crew missed that. Calvin Taylor had the pressure. It almost looked like he was throwing a screen, but there's nobody in the area. There's a tight end, but the tight end runs down the field. Right? There's nobody there. Definitely in the tackle that's, box. That's grounding. Third down and ten. Gators catch a break. Late pressure comes. Franks takes a hit and completes. Able to complete to Kyle Pitts. That was a tough throw and catch. Gain a 12 on the play. Big time throw and catch because he had to let it go before the receiver comes out of the break. Look at where he's throwing it. He hasn't even turned around yet. And Felipe Franks under pressure gives him an opportunity and a huge conversion on third down. Took a little shot from Boogie Watson. Move the sticks. Great composure from Franks, right? Runs in for a touchdown, gets a hold, gets away with one on the intentional grounding, but makes him pay on third down. Franks looks to keep it. Take it on to people. He took a shot after the gain of two. Oof. Second down upcoming. Those are not the kind of shots you want your starting quarterback taking. And, and Felipe Franks needs to protect him, himself, too. You get in, in that mesh area as a quarterback, and you get guys around your legs, and then you start taking a couple shots. And you're sort of standing up tall yeah, at that yeah. spot. That's where you can really get cleaned up. Ninth play of the drive upcoming. P. Ryan. P. Ryan has found no running room. Boogie Watson again on the stop. I got P. Ryan at eight carries for 12 yards. Quick math, that's about a yard point two per carry. Right around there, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, you get the idea. I was told there'd be no math. Most third downs, Mark Stoops and Brad White have decided to bring pressure on Felipe Franks. See if they decide to change it up and play a little more defense because they've had struggles on third down. And I think Kentucky's going to take a timeout. Timeout, Kentucky, their first of the first half. 3.27 to go in the half. Gators looking to even things up. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper's Championship Drive Game of the Week. From our Xfinity Skycam on third and eight. Piron out of the backfield. Not going to get enough. Needed it, got six. DeAndre Square saw to that. And it's fourth down. That was a big time tackle there by DeAndre Square. That saved him four points potentially. He doesn't get uh, P. Ryan on the ground, and uh, he could have walked into the end zone. That's uh, a big play by the sophomore. Evan McPherson on. 27-yard field goal attempt. Not even close. From 27. Way right. Keeps it at 14-7 time. And you see the leader of this defense, Cash Daniel, moving everyone from that defensive front over right in the spot where the kicker is looking. Huge job by the leader of this group. Welcome back to Lexington Horse Country. And the big horses up front for this Kentucky football team have been getting the job done. Protection has been great for Sawyer Smith. And then when they want to run the football, they go behind Stenberg and Jackson. Smoke gets into the end zone. The first half of this game has been controlled up front by the offensive line for Kentucky. We'll see if they can get more points here before half. Sawyer Smith has yet to miss eight for eight. Do I hear nine for nine? I do out of the backfield. 
A.J. Rose has first down yardage with two and a half to go in the half. And Kentucky has two timeouts. Check in with Matt Barry. Guys, coming up in the Mercedes-Benz halftime report, Clemson hoping to avoid the trap at Syracuse. Plus, BYU comes back late against USC. And Herm Edwards goes on the road against Michigan State and upset Sparty again. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, join me coming up at the half. Thanks, Matt. Good for you, Herm. How do you not root for Herm Edwards? <laughs> My kids can go play there anytime. Two minutes to go in the half. Pressure. Sawyer steps away from it and throws and could not hook up with Bowden dangerously across the middle. Yeah, it was a good idea, a good thought. Extended the play just a little bit too far out in front. And Sawyer Smith needs to, he needs to realize right now is an opportunity for Kentucky to open this game up. They have a seven-point lead. They got the ball now. If they get points here before halftime, and then they get the ball to start the second half, if they put back-to-back -back scoring drives, this complexion of this game would be completely different. That was Smith's first incomplete pass of the game. Second and ten. Rose for a few. Kyrie Campbell will stop. Gain of four. We haven't talked a whole lot about A.J. Rose. We've been talking mostly about smoke, but, you know, that's a tough, tough job. But they've got three guys that they've been using this, this season. Rose, smoke, and then Chris Rodriguez uh, is the third guy. Uh, comes in as a redshirt freshman. But they've got three very capable running backs. Four or five on third down conversions here tonight. Not a lot of urgency here by Kentucky. Looked like Mullen took a timeout. Timeout, Florida. Their first of the first half. We'll step out. ESPN Plus is the place. Interesting clock management there. Yeah, I think Dan Mullen was calling a timeout there, knowing now that Kentucky's in third and seven situation. He's trying to save some time if he gets the football back on offense. I just don't know why he waited till there was nine seconds on the play clock to do so. And I thought it was a lack of urgency on Kentucky's part. Try to get down the field and get another score. That pass underneath, good for the first down. That will stop the clock. Lynn Bowden for a gain of nine. And now Kentucky will, will start to hurry up. You get that first down, now you can be, be aggressive. Clock is winding. 70 seconds left in the half. Two timeouts for Kentucky. Sawyer Smith, too high. Fingertips of Josh Ali. Just the second miss of the night for Sawyer Smith, who said he was one of the older players on the team. And I'm like, well, how old? He's I'll be 22 soon. But, so not that old. <laughs> yeah, it's not his first rodeo, I think is what he was trying to tell you. Older player, I'm thinking, all right, 25, 26, grad transfer, been around the block. He's still 21. It's all relative, Greece. Second and ten. Kentucky on the ground. A.J. Rose, no gain. Rather conservative from my taste. Yeah, now that one, now that one I, don't, I don't get that one. Um, you get a first down, and you get close to midfield, and you got two timeouts, and, and you run the ball right up the middle. I mean, that's, and I don't know why Mullen's not calling a timeout, because it's third and ten. The likelihood of them converting that is not great, but both coaches seem to me to kind of just want to get to halftime. Oh boy. Smith wasn't ready for the snap. Off his belly and into his hands, and he'll throw that one away. 18 seconds left, and it's wow. fourth down. This is college football, right? Like, you, you think you're all buttoned up, and you know, and then the center snaps it, and the quarterback's not even looking. They, they avoid disaster here. He fumbles that ball. They can pick it up, run it back. Stupid score, sure. Wow. That's Drake Jackson, the center. Yeah, Stoops wants to talk to both of those guys together. And this is our first punt of the game. It's Max Duffy. Fair catch at the 10. Freddie Swain on the fair catch. And 11 seconds left in this half. This was an odd, odd start, Greece. 
They trade fumbles in the first couple of minutes, then Florida marches in for a touchdown. But really, ever since that point, top 10 team has been a bit in trouble here, and Kentucky's looked the better of the clubs. I don't think last year was a fluke, right? You know, last year, Kentucky ran the ball for 303 yards with Benny Snell and Terry Wilson, right? But they controlled the line of scrimmage. That's the difference to me in the first half. On both sides of the ball, Kentucky has been better in the trenches. And Kentucky doing it with a backup quarterback. And the Gators will take a knee here. Kentucky will get the football to start the second half. A rather interesting first half on a steamy night in Lexington, Kentucky. 14-7 Wildcats. 14 unanswered by Kentucky. And again, they will get the second half kickoff. What a story Sawyer Smith has been in this one. 10 of 13. All three incompletions coming on that last drive. 128 yards passing and the one touchdown. Down to Molly. Thank you, Steve. Coach, what does your offense need to do to be more effective? Well, I think we're doing okay. I mean, we, we had a guy, one guy go the wrong way and we fumble sack. You know, we had a guy uncovered down the field. Would have been a touchdown. Uh, you know, then we got a, you know, we get a penalty. We're about to score. And we end up with another penalty uh, down here. That you know, the same guy actually. Uh, so we you know that one guy. We got to get that cleaned up. Young players got to get that fixed up. Thank you, coach. Yeah, thank you. Steve. Dan Mullen doesn't seem all that bothered. Huh. Easy fix. Easy fix. We'll try, try that after the second game of last season too. <laughs> Send it to Matt Barry, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN, presented by Hampton, by Hilton. Highly anticipated matchup in the SEC between Kentucky and Florida. Sees the Wildcats up 14-7 as we get ready to open up the third quarter. A very pleasant Saturday night to you all, wherever you are watching us. Steve Levy along with Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, Molly McGrath down on the field shortly. So, you know, Sawyer Smith, we thought he might be a good story, but we didn't, didn't know. know. Five and two was a starter at Troy. This is the SEC and against that fast Florida defense hit his first nine passes. I think everybody in the Commonwealth was wondering, you know, what Sawyer Smith was going to bring to the table. No Terry Wilson. No problem in the first half for Sawyer Smith. This is the touchdown, which was recognition, which as a, as a new quarterback, sometimes you think they're not going to be able to recognize. He recognizes the safety goes to the middle, knows exactly where he wants to go man to man, one on one on the outside, and he gets the touchdown. He's also been able to do it with his feet in the red zone. Quarterbacks can affect defenses with their feet. This was a huge pickup on a third and five where he uses his legs. And then he's been supported by this offensive line. They are coming off the football. Stenberg and Jackson in particular opening up lanes for all these running backs for Kentucky. That is an offensive recipe that Mark Stoops is really excited about it. And the arm of Sawyer Smith is adding another element to their team. See the numbers. Those three incompletions coming on that final drive of the first half. And Kentucky will get the football to open up the second half. Lynn Bowden is back deep. He was wearing uniform number three in the first half. Out of respect to his starting quarterback, Terry Wilson. He's back now to his original, his own uniform, number one for half, number two. Down to Molly. Well, Steve, Kentucky's head coach Mark Stoops was really pleased with how his quarterback Sawyer Smith responded to adversity in that first half. He said once he settled down and settled in, he did some really good things. But his message to him at the half was you need to be more aggressive. Feel free to take some shots. And uh, Stoops was also really pleased with the physicality of his defensive front. He said they need to continue to stay consistent. And they want to force Florida into some more predictable situations, Steve. Thank you, Molly. Yeah, Kentucky's got the beef. Up front on offense and on defense. But to take advantage of that here in the second half. On first down and 10, A.J. Rose is taken down by Ventrell Miller after a gain of one. You know, I think what's interesting, what Molly is saying there, you know, with respect to Sawyer Smith and this offense in particular, you know, for the past year with Terry Wilson at quarterback, it was a run heavy, run first, 
don't make mistakes don't turn the football over and play good defense and now because of the unfortunate injury to Terry Wilson and, and Sawyer Smith's talent throwing the football they are going to have to change offensively and maybe for the better Smith looking right and throwing to the right able to complete to Allen Daly it's going to be just short of the marker Daly off his first career start he makes the grab Sawyer Smith last year took over the starting job seven games into the season at Troy after Caleb Barker went down with a knee injury and again went on to go five and two as a starter he was the MVP of the Dollar General Bowl leading Troy to a 42 32 victory over U Buff U University of Buffalo but you look at those numbers right he completed his first nine passes I mean that's this is uh, can't say enough about the performance tonight on the ground and he'll force his way through so he comes out in relief Greece a week ago the very first pass play the coaching staff told us he could have punted it to the tight end I mean that's how wide open the tight end is and instead Smith shook it off went 54 yards down the field Dahmad Wagner and everybody had big smiles on their face <laughs> Well, Could I guess punted it to the tight end. If the head coach says at halftime, be more aggressive, I think you're going to see it here in the second half. I mean, if he was confident coming in based on that first half, off the play fake. He'll take a shot. Justin Rigg dropped it right over the linebacker, David Reese, and into the hands of Rigg. That's a fine throw. Great throw, but it's a better block by his halfback, A.J. Rose. Take a look here. He's going to come and chop down Grenard. You got to fake this and then get that guy on the ground. That is as good as you can do it. And trust me, when you watch the film it tomorrow, you're going to get a big thank you from Sawyer Smith. And watch Sawyer Smith's feet on that, too. They, he saw the protection was going to be there. He just backed up a little bit, but still stepped into that throw and layered it in perfectly. Rose has some size. 6'1", 210 from Cleveland. Now reward him with a carry. It'll stumble forward for about three. And it'll be third down upcoming. I think, Todd, that might have been a little bit of uh, ignorance there on the part of Sawyer Smith. I don't know if I would have trusted my halfback to block the defensive end. I wouldn't have had that much faith. <laughs> but at least he knew he had to step <laughs> yeah. back a couple yards. <laughs> they stuck his head in there. Second down and six upcoming. That's Bowden. Fake the flip, and Smith will run for a couple more. Third and four upcoming. And we saw a lot of that design when Terry Wilson was still the quarterback. You know, a lot of the quarterback run. They still want to have parts of that in this system, but they're doing this, as you can see, against a very formidable defensive front. Looking at the replay on the Jumbotron here in the stadium, it looked like they thought, the fans did, there was a targeting call on Sawyer Smith on that last play. They snap it, no buzz down. And on the ground, A.J. Rose inside the 15. It's a gain of 21. Drake Jackson is continuing to own the line of scrimmage from his center position. Coming up onto the second level, there he is, 52. He gets the linebacker, and Rose follows, smartly follows right behind him. Kentucky is already 7 of 9 tonight on third down conversions. A season ago in the swamp in the game, everybody's still pointing to. They were 9 of 13 on yeah. third down. And the reason that they might have been your ball game. The reason they were so good is because they were good on first and second down. They weren't in third and long situations. They've been picking up some chunks on third down in this game so far. From the 13. Rose. Just inside the nine, a flag comes out. There's a flag back at the 15. Brad Stewart made the stop. Offense number 70, 10 yard penalty, first down. We got Darian Kennard, the right tackle, uh, who was out of position and he just reached out and grabbed. That was a good call. Kennard's bio says. He's related to Dolly Parton. How about, do you have that in your notes? Uh, no, 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 no. That's what I bring to the party, okay? How, how are they related? I, don't, I didn't get that deep. Oh, okay. Isn't that enough to be related to Dolly Parton? All treetops, I got it. Are you related to anybody famous, Chris? <laughs> Besides your father. 
I got one for you. Remind me to tell you that story. <laughs> First and 20. Little middle screen to rig the tight end. Get six back. Jonathan Grenard made the stop. Well, you get the sense that the Gators defense has come out here and they've they've taken some shots on this first drive. But if they can keep Kentucky out of the end zone, at least force a field goal attempt to be a huge win for them. But Kentucky looks like they're in control of, of the line of scrimmage. Good protection. Now it runs out. Sort of shoveled it underhand and it's intercepted. Picked off by the Gators. And it's Sean Davis to the 30. And Davis gallops down to the 10. Sawyer Smith ran down the field to stop a touchdown. Ill-advised throw and motion by Smith. And then he recovers. It's a 72-yard return on the interception. Wow. Mark Stoops wanted him to be more aggressive, but he also got to be smart in these situations. He's trying to make a play. You can see where he's trying to go with that ball. He's trying to throw it right here, but he doesn't see Sean Davis behind. Makes a huge play for his defense and keeps him out of the end zone. And you mentioned a great effort from Sawyer Smith to make the tackle to save the touchdown. That is remarkable. And they're attending to Smith's wrist right now. Gators trying to go fast. Piron Tapia screen. Under 10 to go in the third. Florida trailing by a touchdown. Felipe Franks the pump. Gets some pressure. Takes a shot. He'll throw it away. Boogie Watson on the pressure. Yeah, I keep an eye on Sawyer Smith. You're right. He was holding that right wrist. He looks to be all right. And there's Terry Wilson right there next to him, still down on the sideline. What a great shot of Terry Wilson, right? Still engaged, still involved. Terrible injury that, that he suffered. And still up down there for his teammate. They think Wilson will come back strong. Hope to get him back doing some work in the spring. Here's Franks. Good protection underneath crossing of Van Jefferson. A flag comes in as Jefferson got close to the first down marker. We're going to call pass interference here on the offense. They were trying to throw a little a screen. It's basically a screen, uh, but the receivers on the outside were blocking before the ball was thrown. And they back judge. There alert. is no foul for offensive pass interference. The pass is cut behind the line of scrimmage. It certainly looked like that ball was downfield. It didn't look to me like it was behind the line of scrimmage. Take a look. All right here's the block. But that ball is beyond the line of scrimmage by a yard. Yep. That should be a penalty. And that's a huge call because you know, it brings up a third and short situation here where it should be second and long. Red zone penalties have been an issue for the offenses. Florida catches the break there. Oh, let's see. The previous play is under further review. Good. That's great. You know? They'll take a look. We'll take a look as well during this commercial break and show you the outcome. ESPN rules expert Matt Austin joins us now from our SEC network headquarters. What did you see while we were in commercial break, Matt? Well, this is a tough call for the officials on the field because it is so close. The, the receiver does look like he catch, touches the ball beyond the line, but then he takes a step back towards the line. So this ball did cross the line of scrimmage, and I would expect them to stick with the pass interference call. So instead, thank you, Matt. Instead of a third and one for Florida at the Kentucky 12, it's second and 25. At the 36, that's a huge turn of events. But it's the right call. Good for them for getting it right. Setting up Piran on the screen with a blocker in front of him. The blocker didn't matter. Brandon Eccles with an excellent individual tackle 
to keep that from being a big game. That's as good a tackle as you're going to see in college football. Brandon Eccles goes 5'11", 174 pounds. Look at him take on the tackle foresight and still get P run on the ground. That's as good as you can do it. That's got to bottle an offensive lineman, right? You know, I keep thinking, there's one little guy in front of me. <laughs> I got this. Small but slippery. Third and 17 after the game of eight. Wildcats rush four. Pressure. Franks escapes for now. He'll tuck it and run. To the 15. Boogie Watson made sure he didn't get the first down yardage gain of 13 on the play. Needed 17, got 13. And it's yes. a fourth down. Great job by Kentucky defensively. Sticking with their receivers as Felipe Franks has been extending plays. He's done it a number of times in this game, but they plastered to the receivers and forced him to tuck the ball and run. McPherson, remember, missed from 27. This is from 32. On the way. And that'll settle things down. Florida drive that started back at their 21-yard line. Results in a field goal. And the penalty is critical. Florida's not going away tonight. Every September, Keeneland Horse has its yearling sale. They bring in millions of dollars from buyers looking for the next Triple Crown champion. I got a million, I got a two million, I got a three million, I got a four million. We should have gone over there. Yeah, we, we should have. You, know, you know, between the three, four of us, we could have pooled our money and got a, got a thoroughbred, no? A Philly sired by a Triple Crown winner sold for $8.2 million. Maybe Matt Barry oh, wow. bought him. I for sure bought him. That's in my budget. Checking in on Florida State, Virginia on ACC Network. James Blackman, the Cam Akers, Florida State. They've been good in the first half this year. Let's see if they can continue it in the second half. Up four on Virginia. The first three days of the sales grossed $160 million, Greece. Oh. There's a lot of money in this town in general, but especially every September for the yearling sale. When you fly in, it's all horse farms. Mm -hmm. And private airplanes. First down and 10. Here's Cavassier Smoke. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Steve, you saw Sawyer Smith grabbing his right wrist after that last drive. When he was opening and closing his right hand, he was in visible pain. And then he practiced throwing a ball to a teammate. He said, I'm fine, but he grimaced a couple times during his throws, so it's definitely bothering him, Steve. Yeah, it looked like when he made that tackle, uh, the, the defensive back came down on his arm, so keep an eye on that. Quick throw out to the right, completes to Bowden, making some people miss. The approach is midfield. Brad Stewart brought him down after a gain of nine. How Sawyer Smith got back in that play, Grease, to make the stop on what would have been a touchdown. He was out of the play. He was along the sideline. And a great effort to get back in it, and really it leads to a 10-point swing. I tell you, when you make a, a mistake like he made, you know, you want to atone for it and give him credit. He, he got up off the mat, made the tackle, and it turned out to force a field goal. Second and one. Keep it on the ground. Smoke has the first down. No big run so far for Cavassier's Smoke. He's the first Kentucky player. Since 1946, they go back to those statistics to have touchdown runs of 32 or more yards in each of the first two games. Where is this Florida defense? Right, like Kentucky is, is controlling the line of scrimmage. They're doing whatever they want to do, throwing it and running it. And this heralded Florida defense, they got to show up. Smith had a man wide open. Bowden probably could have brought it down, but Smith made it harder than it had to be. You wonder if the wrist had an impact on that throw. Maybe. All right, that, that, that's, a, that's a, as easy a throw as you're going to have. Sometimes the ball comes out. See how that ball is? It's not a tight spiral. It doesn't look like it's coming out as good as it did in the first half. 
Walker Wood is listed as the backup quarterback. But we know Bowden can throw the ball as well. First down and 10, just across midfield. Watch for this throw. A little tighter spot and it's caught. Ahmad Wagner in a 50-50 ball battle with Marco Wilson. Wagner wins it and the flag comes in late. It's a gain of 20. We'll check the penalty marker. Well, that ball was a little better. We're going to check for the targeting. Donovan Steiner comes over and puts his helmet right in the chest of Wagner. We'll check it when we come back. 14-10, Kentucky. We've had our second targeting penalty and ejection of the night. The latest to Donovan Steiner. The junior out of Houston, 13, and White comes over late. Clearly lowers the helmet into the chest of Ahmad Wagner. And he has been ejected from the game earlier tonight. Yusuf Corker of Kentucky was ejected. And again, these things will add up. That's the first of the season for both. You get three, it's an automatic suspension. And now Florida is without their critical pass rusher here. Yeah, Zuniga on, this, on the sideline. So two of their starters for this Florida defense not on the field in this red zone situation. This is similar to the area where Smith threw the interception the last time down the field. Up four, looking for more. Smith lofts one, back shoulder, it is caught, touchdown. Keaton Upshaw beats Brad Stewart for the score. We have seen time and time again Sawyer Smith giving his bigger receivers jump ball chances down the field. He's done it numerous times with Ahmad Wagner. This time he throws it to the six foot six Keaton Upshaw matched up on the six foot tall Brad Stewart. It was a mismatch. And poor boots it through. 124 consecutive extra points by Kentucky kickers. So with 539 left. Here in the third quarter, the Wildcats open up a 21-10 lead. Out to prove to everyone, last year in the Swamp was not a fluke. Kentucky wants to be considered among the upper echelon of the SEC. It was last year after Kentucky snapped that 31-game losing streak to Florida. Mark Stoops awarded the game ball to his offensive line coach, John Schlarman. Stoops said, I awarded it to Coach Schlarman for the way our offensive line and tight ends blocked. We rushed for over 300 yards. And then he went on to say, John's going through a lot. It was great to award him the ball. It was July 31st, 2018, that Mike Stoops received two phone calls, not one, two, with a five-minute span, telling him that his coach, John Schlarman, and his outside linebacker, Josh Pascal, were both suffering from cancer. And these two, an offensive line coach and a defensive linebacker, have bonded through this horrendous disease. Unbelievable story. We had a chance to sit down with both of them together yesterday and talking about how they have inspired each other. They've been there for each other. Really, I had, I had chills. It was so cool. Florida back with it. Franks through the hands of Malik Davis. And this crowd is getting loud, trying to protect the 21 to 10 lead. And the amazing thing about Schlarman is his enthusiasm. And there you see. Pascal as if on cue. Making a big hit. Frank's throwing, 
Incomplete. It was behind Tyree Cleveland, and he couldn't haul it in. Molly. Well, Steve, offensive lineman for Kentucky, Logan Stenberg, told me that win over Florida is something he'll take pride in for the rest of his life because they were able to get the win for Coach Schwarman. He said they were inspired by his fight, and they used that as motivation. He said they didn't want the win for themselves. They unselfishly wanted it for their coach, which was, that shows great maturity and perspective from these players. Three to snap it. Just get it away in time. Frank's pressure all around him. Able to throw. Incomplete. Freddie Swain. The flag comes in. Two walkers. There's one in the backfield. They just picked up water, the 40. I think they're going to get a late hit on the quarterback. And then the other flag came from the back judge there. You see him giving his report, typically, when the area of, of holding on the defense. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Holding, number three, is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 15, is accepted. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Jordan Wright for roughing the passer. You had a situation there. The crowd is now into the game. It's third down and long, and Felipe Franks. Everybody said all these kinds of things about him. Those are the kinds of plays in crunch time when the crowd is against you when you need a play you stand in there take a hit deliver a perfect ball down the field for a huge first down and the penalty which is now going to put him across midfield big time play there by 13. you see cleveland still getting a signal or signaling back to the sideline now set just across midfield Damian Pierce. Franks tucked it into his belly late. Pasco on a stop after the game of four. No happy ending yet for John Schlarman. He is starting a new treatment shortly here at the University of Kentucky. That's good news, but it sounds like he's still got a long road ahead of him. Josh Pasco has finished his last treatment, we hope. And when they say you're not cancer free until you have five years of clean scans. We're thinking about both of those gentlemen, both on the field and on the Kentucky sideline here tonight. To learn more about how you can support cancer research, visit the V Foundation at V.org. Really cool. These guys both have affected this game in particular. We saw Pasco making plays, and you could argue that the most valuable unit on Kentucky's team so far in this game has been their offensive line. Coached by Jim Schlarman. Third down and two. Franks tucks it. Won't get there. Took a big shoulder. Cash Daniel fired up in the middle. Fourth down. I think I think Dan Mullen's going to go for it here. He's down 11, realizing that. Uh, there's not as many possessions left in this football game. With the way Kentucky's been playing offensively and controlling the line of scrimmage, I think this is the right call for Mullen to go for it on fourth and one. Now Florida has converted five of six fourth down attempts so far this young season. Got a throw for it. Franks from behind. He's bent over backwards by Calvin Taylor. Lucky to hang on to the football. And the Gators turn it over on downs. And Franks is hurt in obvious pain. You could see he got bent over backwards. How he hung on to the football is amazing. Oh boy, yeah, that was, that was really ugly the way that he went down. They're looking at his lower extremity, looking at his ankle. You got to commend him for the effort to try to get that first down. And he put his body in harm's way, fighting and scratching to try to get that. Knew how big of a play that was. And it does not look good for Felipe Franks. You heard the groan in the background. They just showed the play. Yeah, he's in on the jumbo scoreboard. 
Yeah, no, they get they're getting the cast out. Yeah, that's you feel bad for Felipe Franks. No question. As his teammates look on. All right, Matt, these are live pictures now. You have a question how popular Felipe Franks is with his teammates. I mean, that's the entire sideline for Florida on the field to wish their quarterback and leader well. We are not going to show you the replay of what took place. Calvin Taylor, the 6'9", 310-pounder for Kentucky, rolled up upon the ankle of Felipe Franks. Yeah. And let's just say it didn't look good. No, it's it, he dislocated his ankle, right? And like we, we've seen that before with other players, and uh, it, it's such a painful situation for Felipe Franks. Uh, but it looks like his season is over. Good job by this Kentucky crowd, hated yeah. SEC rival, doing the right thing. And you know, Franks has come under in his Florida career an awful lot of criticism, yeah. uh, inconsistency on the field. Uh, lots of critics off of it, but again, his teammates, he's so popular. We hear he eats with all defensive guys. You don't hear a lot about the quarterbacks doing that. And yeah. His teammates love him. They were ready to roll with him. He looked poised for a big season this season. He's an emotional player. He's an emotional kid, and, and these, are, these are college kids, right? They're out there doing their absolute best, and they're fighting and scratching and clawing, and yeah, they make mistakes, and Felipe Franks has made mistakes on the field and off sure. the field, but you just hate to see that for, for any young player. For their season to end like that. Ball start, offense number 83, five yard penalty. Please reset the game clock to three minutes, 21 seconds. And when Florida gets the football back, that's Kyle Trask, the redshirt junior from Manville, Texas. And you remember last year, uh, Kyle Trask. After the Missouri game, Dan Mullen said that he was going to open up the competition between. Felipe Franks and Kyle Trask and and that week that Tuesday I believe Kyle Trask got hurt and couldn't play and so Felipe it, it went back to Felipe Franks so uh, it wasn't too long ago that Kyle Trask was being looked at for this team to be their leader in the backfield Rose was hit once and somehow gets back to the line of scrimmage in a one yard game Jeremiah Moon in the buck position for Florida made the stop see Terry Wilson the starting quarterback, he's out for the season. Torn patella tendon in his left knee against Eastern Michigan a week ago. So, Leaves, we've seen how Kentucky, this football team, has rallied around their backup quarterback. We'll see if Florida can do the same and rally around Kyle Trask. Did you see the wink from Sawyer Smith? I don't think it was for our camera. It was probably for one of his teammates. They winked right into the camera. There's Sawyer Smith. On the run. He's like, again, don't tell people I can run. I don't want them to know. <laughs> this is all about control for Sawyer Smith, right? You saw what just happened on the other sideline. And you're up 11 in late in the third quarter of this football game against the number nine team in the country. This is about taking control. Don't take unnecessary risk. You saw him use his legs there. Don't take unnecessary hits. Got out of bounds. Manage the situation. Kentucky seven of nine third down conversions. I'll tell you when football games. Complete Lynn Bowden cross midfield and first down yardage. Florida's defense is being too soft. They are not getting pressure on Sawyer Smith. Third and nine? Are you kidding? That's that's where this defense gets after quarterbacks. They're the number one team in the country sacking the quarterback. You see soft coverage and no rush on the quarterback. Florida and Todd Grantham are making it too easy for Kentucky. Yeah, all night long we've seen free access throws. Just easy throws for five yards and receivers can go make a play after the catch. Pitch. Rose turns the corner. You know, 
Todd, that's a great point because I think what Todd Grantham is saying over there on the sidelines, listen, when I play man-to-man, -man, they're throwing the ball to Ahmad Wagner or to the tight ends. They've gotten touchdowns off that, so he doesn't feel good about playing man, and he's, gone, he's gotten out of his rhythm and his play calling as an aggressive defensive coordinator. This Florida defense, 10 sacks against Miami in that week zero game. They've got 14 players who have been involved in the 15 sacks coming in. Tonight they have a whole one sack on Sawyer Smith. That's Rose. He's going to be short. David Reese made sure of that. Last season it took the Gators five games to get to those 15 sacks. But they have not had much pressure on Sawyer Smith tonight. Well, I think we're, we're seeing really how poor Miami Hurricanes offensive line was, right? And this is a legit offensive line. Now, Todd, you went out on a limb and said this was the best offensive line in the SEC, and you gave him a hard time. Yeah. Are you going to give him an apology now? Please. No. No, there's no apology. Of course not. <laughs> Check back in week six, week seven, week eight. You've heard that before. <laughs> Third and one. Great defense. David Reese, so impressive tonight. On third and one, not a chance. The senior from Farmington, Michigan. He's been outstanding in the middle for Florida. And a decision now for Mark Stoops. Is he going to go for it on fourth and short? I think he's going to let this run down. Think about this decision at the end of the third quarter. Fourth and one. At the Florida 39. Decision time when we come back to start the fourth. Fourth quarter, the joint is jumping. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Molly McGrath, and Todd McShay. And Mark Stoops, the head coach of Kentucky, is going forward here. I was a little surprised knowing that Florida has a backup quarterback who's going to take his first nap, but I love the aggressiveness here. Great point, Todd. They've been, they've been coming off the ball. This offensive line put it in their hands. It's Rose. I don't think he got there. Who else? But David Reese stepped up in the middle. What a ball game David Reese is having for Florida. And they turn it over on downs. This Florida defense needed a captain, a leader to step up and make a play. David Reese made that play. They had to have it. And he's unblocked right here. And he's just going to knife through and get Rose on the ground. Reese, David Reese has 15 tackles. That was probably his easiest one of the night. I mean, nobody blocked him. A little miscommunication up front by Kentucky. I think Todd's point was a great one, right? With a brand new quarterback coming on the field, why not punt it down? Maybe you get it inside the 10 and force him to come drive the length of the field. And maybe you give this, this crowd an opportunity to get into the game too. So instead, this brand new quarterback will feel a little bit better about things and start with excellent field position. Yep. yep. Obviously, hindsight's 20-20, right? If you, if, you, if you block Reese and you get the first down, you really take control. I'm not saying it was the wrong decision. I just think that yeah, I also said I love the aggressive. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> you can't play it both ways, that exactly. Shay. <laughs> exactly. I'm owning it. So the defense got the Gators offense, the football back. We'll say hello to Kyle Trask, Redshirt Jr. out of Manville, Texas. He's 4 of 5 on the season passing, 40 yards and one touchdown. See how they ease him into the game or take a shot. Quick out, get it to Van Jefferson and a good gain of eight on first down. So you're going to see a big physical specimen here in Kyle Trask, 6'5", 240 pounds, and he can throw the football. That's, there's no question about his uh, talent and ability. He just doesn't have the seasoning and experience. And Dan Mullen, uh, certainly one of the best coaching quarterbacks doing it. I'm sure he'll have him ready to play. Got into four games a season ago before he injured his foot. Chris, you referenced that earlier. Second down and two. Throwing and completing sideline to Josh Hammond. That's a good zip on the football. And a great route by Josh Hammond. That was not the design route. He was running downfield on a go route. Saw his quarterback was in trouble. Cut off the route and got friendly on the sideline. Tippy toe. That's really well done. 14 yards on the play. Hammond's first grab of the night. 
The strength of the Florida offense are the receivers. So trash get the ball in their hands. They always have playmakers. That's Piran in motion. Good protection for Trask. And a wide open Van Jefferson with some running room. And a stiff arm has him out of bounds for 20. After a gain of 20, here come the Gators. Boy, if I'm Brad White, I, I'm, I'm not just going to sit back and let Kyle Trask get comfortable, right? Come after him, bring some pressure, make him read defense, muddy the picture, because right now, Trask looks like he's been playing the whole game and comfortable. Inexperienced secondary for Kentucky, and they're down. Yusuf Corker, their sophomore free safety, was ejected in the first half for targeting. See if Trask can take advantage of that. Another quick throw to Van Jefferson on the money. Down to the six. Gain of 13, Todd. I don't know about you, Brian, but as a, a quarterback, just watching him come in after sitting and being cold all night long and to watch how comfortable he is in the pocket and the rhythm that he's in early, this early playing, it's so impressive to me. Yeah, Todd, I think, I think it's a little bit different for Kyle Trask because he, he's coming into this ball game and he knows that Felipe Franks is out for the season. He knows that this team is now on his shoulders, not just for tonight, but for the rest of the season. Trask so far has come in and hit all four of his throws for 55 yards. See what he has next. Taj Dodson needed to be helped off the field. The free safety, he was the replacement for Yusuf Corker, who was ejected for targeting in the first half. They were already thin and inexperienced in that backfield, defensive backfield. And Tyrell Agent has slid over. Agent had the interception earlier in the game. Let's see if Florida can take advantage. Trask throws it up for grabs. And Lucas Kroll unable to run underneath it. Cash Daniel forced Trask into that throw. Yeah, and great coverage by DeAndre Square. This is a staple in, in Dan Mullen's offense. It's the throwback. Hard roll to one side, throw back to the tight end, but DeAndre, DeAndre Square was not fooled. He has made a number of really good, smart plays tonight, especially in pass coverage. That is Trask's first incompletion in relief of Felipe Franks, who we fear the season is over. Second down and goal from the eight. Trask trying to keep it, then pitches back to Piran in for the touchdown. DeAndre Square put the hit on Trask, and the very intelligent pitch to Piran for the score, and don't go anywhere. What a great play design by Dan Mullen. Brad White, defensive coordinator, I guarantee you they did not work the option against this Florida Gator team. And there he is, DeAndre Square makes a good play. If he doesn't tackle the quarterback, he'll walk in. But there were two options on one defender. Five-point game, going for two, the Gators. What do you think, Reese? How many, like many two-point conversion plays did the team have? Three or four? I don't like this. I, I kicked kick the extra point. All right, it's too early. It's a lot of time left in this game. And how many reps would the backup quarterback get on the two-point conversion? Zero. Exactly. Well, let's see. Trask looking right, throwing, it's deflected and nearly intercepted. Boogie Watson got fingertips on it, and that'll keep it a five-point game. Boy, that, that decision by Dan Mullen there. Boogie Watson should have intercepted that ball, and there was nobody between Boogie Watson and two points for the Wildcats going the other direction. Trask was very lucky that this ball wasn't picked Ooh. off. I just don't like going for two with that much time left in the game. Right? It's, it's hard to throw the ball inside the five-yard line, number one. Uh, but get, take the points. Get the extra point. Well, everybody says wait till the fourth quarter, but it's only two and a half minutes in through that fourth quarter. Let's go down to Molly for a sideline report. Well, Steve, Florida sideline was very emotional after Felipe Franks' injury. A couple of offensive players got into a verbal altercation and had to be separated, and it was backup quarterback Kyle Trask who pulled them apart. So it looks like he's keeping his cool, and it's paid off, Steve. All right, Molly, thank you. Lots of action everywhere you look. What a night. Kroger Field here in Lexington. 
Five point game, 12.40 left. And Lyndon Bowden will let it bounce into the end zone. We'll bounce it back to Matt Barry. Steve Levy, thank you. LSU, a little bit of a sleepwalk against Northwestern State. Coming off the Texas win, Joe Burrow, the keeper for the touchdown. LSU up 30-14 in the third quarter. Coming up the nightcap, we got a little Pac-12 after dark. Khalil Tate in Arizona taking on Texas Tech. That coming up at the conclusion of your game. Steve Levy, back to you. That'll be fun. I think L I saw LSU. They obviously recovered. They had three points in the first quarter tonight, LSU. <laughs> Slow start. Let's see. It's been a highly entertaining football game here tonight in Lexington, Kentucky. Sawyer Smith just got it to smoke. Well, there's so many storylines that have unfolded during the course of this game. But this is, you know, it's, it's Georgia and then everybody else in the SEC East, right? Both of these teams thought they had designs on maybe uh, being that next team, uh, but now it looks like for sure both teams will be playing the extent of this season without their starting quarterback, so it's it's who can adjust best. They were that second team last year, both finishing at 10-3, and three, second in the SEC East. Both off the 2-0 and o starts here. Kentucky is done with their Mac portion of the schedule. You wondered how they would fare in conference with a backup quarterback named Sawyer Smith, and he's been outstanding tonight. 21-16 Cats. Just over 12 minutes to play. Here's Smoke for a few. Grenard to stop. I think Mark Stoops probably needs to take a, a little bit of his own advice at halftime and be aggressive. Don't go into a shell here as you see A.J. Dotson, the backup safety leaving the field but don't go into a shell here because uh, Kyle Trask came out was impressive on that drive so uh, Florida can still score points without their starting quarterback and Sawyer Smith has done nothing to prevent you from giving him the green light to throw the football they came out aggressive Sawyer Smith connecting on his first nine passes 14 7 lead at halftime for Kentucky 21 16 here in the fourth Smith Got a sidearm sling kind of motion there to Lynn Bowden. Kair Elam on the coverage. It's a gain of six. Yeah, but uh, a, a good tackle brings up a fourth down. And credit Florida's defense. Back-to-back -back drives that they have gotten the stop. They've gotten off the field. Todd Grantham has made some adjustments. Playing a little bit more zone. That time he's uh, Kair Elam, the true freshman, sitting outside and makes the tackle. And you just wonder how important that fourth down and one was for Kentucky when they went for it they were aggressive and didn't wind up getting it it's just it feels like the whole game is turned around from that point yep guys we've just witnessed the first three and out of the game how about that As Max Duffy boots one away oh that takes a big Kentucky bounce wow. what a Kentucky bounce it's still rolling listen to the roar from the crowd it's out, down to the four yard line Hey, Max Duffy, you just nailed a 63-yard punt. Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Kentucky Wildcats student section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Molly's on the committee, right? Quick throw out of the end zone. Van Jefferson on the receiving end. Greasy recommends the Mexican pizza. Delicious. Late night drive through Take a look now at our Southwest Airlines drive recap. Impressive first drive for Kyle Trask. Came out firing, throwing the ball on first down. And they get the ball in the end zone with the option of all things. But make a note, they missed a two-point conversion, and it's a four-point game. Here are the Gators. Setting up to be an awful interesting final 10 minutes here in Lexington. Trask comes out throwing. Looks like Van Jefferson is his go-to guy. Sixth catch of the night for Van Jefferson. That's good for eight yards. 
We'll see how Kentucky decides to play this now. Obviously, Kyle Trask is, is capable of throwing the football, and he's got the receivers and the weapons. So what does Brad White, defensive coordinator, want to do? He's down two safeties, not one, but two safeties on the back end, so probably taking man-to-man -man coverage out of the equation. On the ground, a Pirine, and he'll just lean across for the first down. I know it's, you know, I know it happened a while ago, but it's significant with the injuries to Kentucky's defensive secondary. You remember, in the summer, they lost Devontae Robinson. Yeah. He was the guy they were relying on heavily, super confident playmaker. Corker was going to pick it up from there, and it stops in the minutes. It's a bad chain of events back there. And they lost both safety from a year ago. Outstanding players in Darius West and Mike Edwards, both drafted. So they, they're certainly trying to figure out how to stop some holes. And with Josh Allen in the NFL, this is an entirely different defense that beat Florida in the swamp a season ago. Traff, that ball is tipped and hits the turf out of harm's way. Knocked down by Cordell Looney. Wow, great rush from Cordell Looney. You got problems in the secondary? Well, there's more than one way, right? Get some pass rush going and that'll protect your secondary. Great inside move by Looney. So Trask falls to six of eight for 75 yards, five of the six completions to Van Jefferson. Second down and 10. Trask puts some air underneath that one and completes to Freddie Swain. Just shy of midfield, it's a gain of 20 yards. And there's an injured Wildcat down, and that's Quentin Bohanna. That's the nose guard, Bohanna, who's such an important, critical piece of this defense, of the 3-4 defense. The nose guard is one of your most important players. You know, you, you, if you give Dan Mullen one coverage every single snap, like, like Kentucky's doing here, they're getting zone on every just about every snap. He's too good a play caller. He's going to dial it up. He's going to figure out a way to beat the zone, get the get the protection that he needs, and get the ball down the field. Even though you're down players in the secondary, you have to change up your looks against Dan Mullen. Hey, tonight Tyson Fury defends his title against the big Swede Otto Valin. Catch that fight at 11 on ESPN Plus. Then next week, Oklahoma State heads down to the 40 acres for a Big 12 showdown with number 12 Texas. Coverage kicks off at 7.30 on ABC, streaming on the ESPN app. The Fury is eyeing a rematch with WBC heavyweight champ Deontay Wilder. That first fight ended in controversial fashion, as it often does. See Marquand McCall checking in. We got him at 365, <laughs> roughly. Young man from Detroit. Big man from Detroit on first down and 10. And he introduced himself to P. Ryan there, right? He just, Marquand comes Hello. in. No, 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 no. We, we might have lost my, my teammate, but you know what? I'm just going to push the center right back in and tackle P. Ryan before, almost before he gets the handoff. That's a big man. So Bohanna, go, Bohanna goes 361. They actually get heavier with the backup by four pounds. Eight minutes left. Five-point dandy in the SEC on a Saturday night. I mean, man, where would you rather be? Trask under pressure, throws, and it's knocked away. Cash, McDa Cash Daniel leaped up to make sure that Freddie Swain couldn't grab it. Well, I'll give the assist to my man again, Marquan McCall. He just pushes the guard right into Trask's lap. He can't follow through on this throw. Lucky it wasn't intercepted, but that was all McCall. What a big play here for Florida. And Kentucky for both of these teams. You've got to be a little bit more physical on the outside. I know they have to play zone, but you've got to be physical with these wide receivers. Third and 11. Trash, quick throw underneath to Van Jefferson. And he is slammed backwards by Jamari Brown. Fourth down. 
don't understand that play call from Dan Mullen, right? You've, you've got great protection. You've got receivers outside that can get down the field. The quarterback's seeing it well, and you throw a slip screen on third and ten. I just don't understand it. Push the ball down the field and give yourself a chance for a first down. A slip screen's great against man-to-man -man coverage, but Kentucky's not doing that. Tommy Townsend is on for Florida. This is the first punt of the night for the Gators with under eight to play in the fourth quarter. And it will take a bounce and stick down to the eight yard line. It's a 44 yard punt that is near perfect. The punting game really picking up in the fourth quarter. You're watching college football on ESPN presented by Hampton by Hilton. Kentucky nursing that five point lead with the football backed up inside their own tent. Great scene here tonight. I mean, this, these Kentucky fans, they waited a long time to feel this good about their program. And, off of a historic season a year ago, 10 and 3, and they lose their starting quarterback in Terry Wilson, and nobody knows how they're going to respond. 36 seconds. And tonight they've showed up in full force, and their team has produced. We ran into some people that said they would trade all the basketball championships the UK had for just one more college football championship. Not sure about that, but you get the feel. Not just basketball country here, they do love their Wildcats football. Seven and a half to go. On the ground. Smoke for the first down. This is nothing new for, for Mark Stoops, right? Like these last three years he's been here, they had ten upsets. Like they, they're playing good football. And the last three games between these two have all come down to the fourth quarter. 16 and 17 near misses for Kentucky and last year is like Bum Phillips used to say we kicked down the door <laughs> Now we, you got to follow it up the old Houston Oilers People are like wait they were Houston Oilers <laughs> Could never beat the Pittsburgh Steelers Check the flag False start offense number 71 five yard penalty Second down. Boy, Logan Sternberg has been a man amongst boys out there in this football game. Both he and Drake Jackson, the center, have been reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Those two guys, if I had a game ball in the locker room after this one, I'd give them one to each of those guys. Give another one to Coach Schlarman, too. The offensive line coach who's been through so much. No one enjoying this game more than he is right now. With a five point lead. Look at him. Take something off that clock, too. Here's Smoke. Stop by Kyrie Campbell. It's a gain of three on the play. Schlarman, who told us every time he steps into the building, the office, the stadium, it is a relief from his reality. Yeah. Which is something he doesn't want to do. Guy hasn't missed a practice, hasn't missed a game. He is on top of things. And well, this is his, this is his time, right? This is his game. He is on center stage right now. You're up five. You're almost in the four minute mark. You got to start burning some clock, run the football, and lean on that offensive line. Here's the pressure. Smith will take a shot. Air ball, and it is intercepted. Sean Davis. There was nobody home for Kentucky. Maybe Bowden was in the vicinity. And flags fly now. Let's see. Let's see the Florida celebration. The second interception for Sean Davis. And you're right, there was a miscommunication. Smith was throwing that ball for Bowden down the field for Bowden, and he stopped running. And there was nobody left other than Davis. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 31, Florida, his first of the game, 15-yard penalty, first down, Florida. So Davis has the interception and then draws the flag for unsportsmanlike conduct, and he's hearing about it from Coach Mullen. Sawyer Smith throws this ball up. Watch, Bowden's going to be running down the field. 
and he just stops. Look at him right here. He just stops, and the ball ends up down here. Smith was de depending on him to be there, at least for a jump ball situation. They were not on the same page, and a huge turnover for Florida. What a game this has been. This has had a lot of everything. Six minutes left now. Kyle Trask down the sideline, tipped and knocked away. And the flag come in. Two flags come in now. Quadri Mosley has checked in. Again, they are shorthanded among their defensive backs for Kentucky. And I believe he'll be flagged. That one's on Trey Dean, number 21, the nickelback, I think, Steve. He was running in man to man. There he is, number 21, and it's a good call. Pass interference, defense, number 21. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's interesting, they, Kentucky and, and Brad Smith decided to play some man-to-man. -man. I was hoping that they would do that, right? Can't just sit back, and as soon as they go man-to-man, -man, you got great coverage. You're in phase with the receiver. There's no reason to grab the arm, turn around, and catch that football from Trey Dean. First down and 10, approaching midfield. Trask looks cool and calm. Put some air underneath that. Over through his intended target. That could have been intercepted. Van Jefferson didn't have a chance there. Yeah, a little indecision there from Trask. I think he was just trying to throw that football away. See how they sort this one out. It's a sack and then the flag. <laughs> Been on a roller coaster here. You got big plays, huge plays, game changing plays with penalties on top of them. Personal foul, targeting, defense. We've already had two players ejected tonight for targeting. And Carter's like, me? Are they talking about me? He can't believe it. It's a great play by Jordan Wright, and you know, Carter's just coming in there. He, he's not thinking like a safety, right? These are defensive linemen, and they're in there hitting each other in the head on every single snap. And so I'm not surprised that Carter is thinking, well, what did I do wrong? And Trask is already tied up around the legs by Jordan Wright. Matt Austin, our ESPN rules expert. Is this an easy one, Matt? Well, not really, because as you said, he's not a defensive back who's launching or anything. He does come in. He does lower the head. Um, he is he is in attack mode trying to make the tackle. I, I, I think this is going to stand. Hey, Matt, this is going to be confirmed. Matt, let me ask you a question. If that's anybody other than a quarterback, do you think they'd make that call? Uh, I, I would think so. If it was a runner, say, well, if it's a runner, I, I think they would, yes. Way to protect him on the field, Matt. <laughs> If that's a running back in the hole, there's no chance they call that play. Matt Austin, an well, SEC again, referee for 15 seasons. Again, he's not defenseless. It's because of the lowering of the head. Got it. And in that case, Trask is extra vulnerable. He can't get out of there, too. He's wrapped up around the legs. And there goes 90. What an opportunity for Florida now. I mean, the ball's at the 41-yard line and plenty of time. So the sack was a loss of five. Then it's the penalty plus 15. And that gets him to the 41. They're trying to figure out where the ball is going to be spotted. Maybe it should be at the 36 instead of the 41. Because you don't get credit for the five yard sack. That disappears. Three targeting ejections tonight so far. So far, I said. Yeah. 
They are moving the football down to the 36 now. I think originally they included the sack yardage. So you don't get that sack yardage on defense. And now I think we're set to go. Nine penalties against Kentucky. Accepted. Five and a half to go. Five point game on a wild night in Lexington. Found a little seam to Kyle Pitts. Trying to rip off his jersey. He's down to the five. Agent did the best he could with a fistful of jersey. But Pitts would not go down until he had 31 yards. Another big time throw from Kyle Trask. Watch him in the pocket. It's not going to be clean. But this roll, guys, he's, got, he's throwing from a foxhole. Florida going fast here. First and goal from the six. Pirine inside the five. Taking people on. Cash Daniel there, along with Jamari Brown. You're going to take your time here. Second and goal. If you're Trask, right? You don't have to rush anything. Take your time. And Dan Mullen can help him from the sideline. I don't think they need to go fast. Four and a half left in the fourth quarter. Both teams have their three timeouts. Trask going to keep it. And the lane opened up wide for him. Untouched. Kyle Trask into the game and into the end zone. And Florida takes the lead. Can't say enough about the backup quarterbacks in this game. Sawyer Smith knew he was going to be called on in this game. Kyle Trask did not. But when the game has been on the line in the tightest situations, he has been up to the task, and now he's going to have one more opportunity here as they go for two to make this a three-point game. Nearly had a pick six or a pick two returned on the last two-point attempt. Here Trask wants to keep it. Will not find the open lane this time. Cash Daniel said we're not falling for that. And so the Wildcats will get the football down one. With four minutes and 11 seconds left. Don't go anywhere yet. On a night of backup quarterbacks, on opening night in the SEC for the Wildcats and the Gators. Fantastic finish is on the way. I'd be signing up right now. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and NFL highlights. Are you kidding me? Give me some of that. Give me more of this. Four minutes, 11 seconds left of a highly eventful fourth quarter, Grease. Oh, my gosh. Back and forth. Lead changes. We've had fourth down decisions. Mark Stoops decided to try to go for a fourth and short. Didn't make it. Kyle Trask did make this play and missed two-point conversion. Missed the last two-point conversions consecutively. This was the interception that led to the last touchdown. But make a note, Steve. Florida has gone for two twice and missed both. If they had kicked the extra point in consecutive touchdowns, they'd be up three right now. Instead of just one, here's Sawyer Smith, who got off to such a hot start. Short game, six yards to Justin Rigg. For what it's worth, ever since Felipe Franks left the game, Florida has outscored Kentucky 12 to nothing. Gators seem galvanized by the loss, the injury to their leader. And have really picked it up since then, aided by the outstanding play of Kyle Trask yeah. in relief for Franks. Give him credit. He's played really well. Smoke trying to break some tackles into the secondary. First down yardage. Here's Matt Barry. Maybe a little bit of separation for Clemson in their game against Syracuse. Amari Rogers, 87-yard touchdown. That is the longest pass touchdown for Clemson since 2013, right now 24-6. Clemson just scored again, now up 30-6 over on ABC. Pretty much as advertised there. Here's Smith, too high. 
Berlin Bowden. The accuracy that was there in the first half is not there in the second half, and you wonder if that has something to do with his wrist. You no, know, I think if he had that issue with the wrist, you see Bowden right there saying, that's on me. You know, sometimes when a, when a quarterback misses, we always blame the quarterback, but it's it's two people in that, in that scenario, and, and Bowden looked like he cut that rod off short. Makes sense he would be sensitive to that. Grease, understood, noted. There's a flag down. Like one of the Gators jumped. Wagner and some more flags come in. Ahmad Wagner, who is nicknamed Ahmad Flagner because he always draws <laughs> pass interference calls. He's drawn eight pass interference calls when he's been targeted 14 times. Eight out of 14. That's coming into tonight. Even on his touchdown grab, it would have been a P.I. flag. Defense. Offside, number 88, the penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, number three is accepted. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's our Marco Wilson. Yeah, Dan Mullen saying, listen, this guy's 6'5", 235 pounds, and my guy's 6'1", 190. What do you want him to do? Like, he's running in phase with him. Marco Wilson, you don't, you don't need to have your hands all over a guy. Uh, to me, leave the... The, the laundry in the pocket there. That's not a five. The officials have played a big role in tonight's game. On the ground, Smoke won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Loss of one. Grenard, this stop for Florida as we tick under three minutes left. Kentucky trailing by one. They have all three timeouts. That's Chance Poor, the redshirt freshman kicker. Speaking of Clemson, he's from Anderson, South Carolina. He's got a career long of 46. And it hasn't been much of a career. Again, a redshirt freshman. Small sample size. Second and 11. Now the last thing that Sawyer Smith wants to do is have the redshirt freshman have to come out and, and kick a, a game winning field goal. He wants to put this ball in the end zone. Blitz comes late. Back shoulder throw. Bowden has the catch. Bowden went out of bounds. The hat's right? off. You yeah. see the official, the hat's off. He went out of bounds. He was pushed out by the defender. But they've discussed it, Grease, and I think it's going to stand now. Absolutely. It should stand. That's a good catch. He was pushed out by the defender, got back in, established himself, caught the ball with his body in bounds. That's a heck of a play by Bowden. Right, the hat coming off just signifies a player stepped out of Correct. bounds. Doesn't mean you can't come back in and reestablish. Two minutes left here in the fourth. On the ground, smoke time. To the 21. This is where you got to get in the... Talk, tell your quarterback, Sawyer Smith, that he needs to use the clock, right? Don't snap the ball until you absolutely have to, but Florida is going to call a timeout. Dan Mullen's going to start to empty his bank. Grease, that's an injured player. Adam Schuler down for Florida. Well, it's not a bad strategy. I know there's a Florida player down, and that's the reason for this stoppage. But considering where Kentucky is right now, if you're Florida, you might want to think about using your timeouts to try to get the ball back with a little bit of time to operate. Yeah, no question. I mean, Dan Mullen, he has to start using those timeouts. Obviously, they would love to get a stop to force the field goal attempt, but if they make it, you got to leave yourself some time. Chance Poor is two of three on the season. His long is 46. That happened in the opener against Toledo. Hit a 40-yarder last week against Eastern Michigan. Career long is 48 as a junior. So the worst the worst case scenario for Florida is they they get the ball back down to down two with a minute and a half left in the game because they need to use their timeouts and get a stop here. Again, that 48 was as a junior in high school. So the ball at the 22. So you're thinking about a 39 yard attempt from here. First things first, Florida needs to stop this. Kentucky offense from getting more first downs and getting in the end zone. 20 seconds left on the play clock. I, I don't understand why Dan Mullen is allowing this to happen. Florida's got all three timeouts. Smoke.
Smith will hand it off to Smoke. To the 18, gain of four. And, and now Dan Mullen's gonna call his timeout. But he could he could have gotten the ball at a minute and a half. I think they're gonna add some time onto that clock too. I believe there was a minute one left when the timeout was signaled. Again, the last three of these games have all been close. Let's go back to the 2017 game. Florida, Kentucky, Wildcats retook the lead in the third quarter on a 23-yard touchdown. Johnson to Conrad, 43 seconds left in the fourth. Florida took the lead. Freddie Swain on a touchdown catch from Luke Del Rio. And the Kentucky kicker Austin McGinnis from 57 fell short as time expired. Yeah, that was part of the 31 game winning streak that Florida had over Kentucky that was snapped last year. What a great metaphor for Mark Stoops on this program, right? They, in the past, they've just come up a little bit short. And they didn't come up short last year. And they're in position here in this game. And it's, it's a testament to their program that they've built, that they are competing on a week in and week out basis in the SEC here at Kentucky. So they did have those seconds back on. 62 ticks left here in the fourth. Third down and two. Third down has been Kentucky's friend all night. Eight of 12 in conversions for third down. On the ground there's Smoke. Won't get the necessary yard as needed to. Got one. Fourth down and Mullen runs on the field for another timeout. To preserve every second, 56 ticks remaining. Now, let me, let me say this. I, I would agree with Dan Mullen if this was an NFL game. You keep one time out, right, for the offensive side so that you can get down there and kick the field goal. But in college football, the clock stops all the time. You get a first down, you don't sure. spike it. You, you, can, you can stop the clock on offense. You can't stop it on defense without using your timeout. What's Chance Poor? What's going through his, his head right now? Redshirt freshman. You know what? You gotta be hey, this is what I signed up for. Yep. This is why I came to Kentucky. I want to be in the SEC. I want to kick game winning field goals in the last minute. This ball is in a good position for him. It's not all the way out on the hash. It's about three yards inside the hash, which makes it an easier angle for this field goal. Snap, hold. Kick. Blake, Blake, three guys involved. Blake Best is a snapper. Grant McKinnis will hold it. 35 yard field goal attempt. Either way, there'll be 58 seconds left. Chance poor for the Kentucky lead. On the way. No! No good! Missed it to the right. Couldn't sneak it inside the upright. 54 seconds left. Florida will get the ball. Now Kentucky has all three timeouts remaining. As you said, they'll be able to stop it on defense. Wow. Just got tight. He got a little tight, didn't let his leg swing free. He was trying to guide it in, Steve, rather than just hitting it and letting it go. He tried to guide it. You can see he short-stepped it. And Florida escapes. And he has to hear about it from Marco Wilson and the rest of the Gators. That's well, why I said when you started this drive, if I'm Mark Stoops, you know, a redshirt freshman kicker, I'm not putting the game in that guy's hands, right? Like, I'm going to do everything I can to get that ball in the end zone. Kentucky will look to run out the rest of this clock. I mean, rather, Kentucky will try to stop the clock with the three timeouts. Here's Piron. I want to get him down to the ground as soon as possible. And there's one of them. Matt Barry, take it away. Steve Levy, thank you. For those of you waiting for kickoff of Texas Tech at Arizona, that game is going to kick on ESPN News. Then at the conclusion of Florida, Kentucky, we'll move that over here to ESPN. What a ball game here tonight. I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't see this end coming, right? In, in the third quarter, 
when Kentucky had control of both lines of scrimmage. Their quarterback was playing great. Felipe Franks goes down and out, and you think there's no way that Florida can get back into this football game. All of a sudden, Kyle Trask comes out, takes the leadership role on offense, is making plays, and Trask looked great. Nine of 13 grease for a buck 26. Yep. yep. Listen, Florida's been outplayed in this game. No I don't question. think there's any question about that. And they have a chance to win this game because the kicker missed it by two feet. I mean, that's that's the ball game. 35-yard attempt. 48 seconds left. Kentucky still can stop the clock two more times. P. Ryan, right under the pile. Cash Daniel to stop. Another tackle for Daniel. Another timeout. So it'll be third down with 44 seconds left. We take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. As always, they are subject change. You see Florida sitting there at number nine. And waiting for that result. Michigan idle today, and this will uh, get all the top ten involved. Yeah, Florida doesn't look like a top ten team to me. I mean, tonight they didn't they didn't come in here and play like a top ten team. Uh, Were you okay before tonight that they're, they're no. ranking at nine? No. You couldn't tell against the competition. Well, they played Miami. They beat Miami, but that was a Miami team we've learned a lot about. I don't think Miami's uh, in anybody's top twenty-five, right? No, not, uh, not right now. But it's you know I, I think there are some there are some great pieces of this team, right? Defensively, uh, they're they're solid. Offensive line, I think, is a big question mark to me. They haven't been able to control the, the line of scrimmage in this game. Um, and you know, honestly, but now we're going to have to find out about Kyle Trask. Can he be up to the test? You saw Tommy Townsend. He's the punter, thinking he's going to have to make sure he can get one off cleanly. Third and six. Kentucky just trying to get the football back. Give it to the first man through. Josh Hammond, sideline, and running away from people. Josh Hammond will not be denied. 76 yards for the touchdown. There are no flags. What a stunning comeback here by Florida tonight. Wow. They're just trying to run out the clock, Dan Mullen is, and they run the end around. And they get a crease, and Hammond, one of the fastest players on this Florida team, puts the nail in the coffin. Thirty-three ticks left. And an interesting extra point, Steve. It's funny you mention that. McPherson will come on. Boots it through, as you might expect, and Florida enjoying an eight-point lead. 33 seconds still remaining. You got to close, right? You got to close, and Kentucky had their chance to go down the field and put it in the end zone and finish this ball game. Florida in a very similar situation, just trying to run out the clock. They don't leave it to any kicker. They give it to Josh Hammond, and Hammond goes long distance for the touchdown hey, listen if you're going to give up the first down though you wanted to give up the touchdown because now it's still an eight point still game i know one, you yeah. only have one timeout 33 seconds it's a, it's a huge a, long shot a wise old veteran might say hammond should have just taken a knee before going in <laughs> right and that's, what that, that's, no what chance. that's what the safety is going to say in the meeting room tomorrow <laughs> yeah coach i missed that tackle because i want to let him score <laughs> i did it on purpose sure so a, a one score or one possession game it remains with 33 seconds left and that that is that's just an odd number right since felipe franks went out florida has outscored kentucky 19 to nothing and again the gators had two missed two-point conversions in the game ball come out to the 25 33 seconds left and Kentucky has one timeout, trailing by eight. So the situation here, right, is you want to try to get this ball in short order to about midfield, give yourself an opportunity, maybe a couple of chances at the end zone. And remember, they have the basketball player, Ahmad Wagner, at 6'5", 234 pounds. He's already made a bunch of plays over Marco Wilson in this game. He's got a five, six-inch height advantage. That's an advantage to Kentucky. 
Here we go. Sawyer Smith, what do you got? Behind his intended target. Only a couple seconds tick away with the incompletion. Second and 10 at 25. And if you're Florida, you got to get some pressure on the quarterback. That's the hallmark of this team, right? At least they, they were coming into this game. They haven't been able to get consistent pressure, but they're only going to rush three. But you know you're going to find a single matchup somewhere. You can't let them sit back there too long. Smith steps up at five. I think his arm was hit as he throws. It's a jump ball. And no one comes up with it. Bowden Davis in a battle. 22 seconds left. Third down. Really need to attack the middle of the field. Florida has two guys, a safety and a corner, playing two deep coverage on the outside of the field. That leaves the middle of the field open. Sawyer Smith needs to attack there. Got all this space here in the middle of the field. Smith getting out of there. Underneath a short little gain for Bowden and so it'll be fourth down now to gain a six down to 17 seconds. Yeah, clock stops on a first down. You do have the one timeout, so you can still use the middle of the field. So Mark Stoops yelling at Sawyer saying, hey, make sure you get the first here. Give yourself a fresh set of downs. You're ready to get up and clock it. Fourth and four. Smith in the middle. Justin Rigg, first down. Or use a timeout, yep. And a timeout. Give yourself a chance, an opportunity to attack the end zone on a couple of shots. They're going to need one more gain of about 10, 15 yards, and then the final play will be the, the Hail Mary. Can your tight ends get down there for the Hail Mary? Like, they're both big boys. They both go 6'6". Six, six. Can they get down there in time in the end zone? We know about Wagner, who goes 6'5". Well, it certain, certainly hasn't been pretty for, for Dan Mullen tonight. It wasn't pretty on the opening weekend against Miami. But if he can get out of Lexington with a win and be 3-0, and oh, I think he'd be really happy. And... Listen, they're going to have to regroup after the injury to Felipe Franks, but I think Kyle Trask has shown tonight, enough to me anyway, uh, to be optimistic about this offense moving forward. Florida gets Tennessee at home next week. Gators do not travel again till October 12th at LSU. The Sawyer Smith throws. Knocked away and complete. Six seconds remaining. It'll be second down. Trey Dean. Got a hand on it. Now you're in a situation here where I don't think that Sawyer Smith can throw the ball to the end zone. So because you didn't complete that ball, now you're going to have to do a hook and lateral or something like that because uh, you just don't have enough arm strength. It's been a crazy night. <laughs> Although I said that, you know, when I was back at Michigan playing against CU and a guy named Cordell Stewart threw it 75 <laughs> yards in the air. I thought the game was over. Sawyer Smith is said to have a strong arm. <laughs> and haven't seen a lot of Troy tape from him. Three to snap it, and here we go. Sawyer Smith underneath. And actually, there's one second left. Now there are zeros on the clock. I think they're going to put one second back. Jeremiah Moon able to bat it away. They were trying to throw that ball and they were going to hook and lateral back to Bowden and Moon just got underneath it. The ACC came out today and apologized last night for ending that game too early. There should have been a second put back on the clock last night yeah. in the North Carolina Wake Forest game. So they had two seconds back here. Third down and ten. Timeout, Florida, their third and final of the second half in the 30-second timeout. You know, you asked me how many uh, 
two point plays teams have. Yeah. I don't think teams have more than one kind of last ditch effort situation plays. <laughs> they just tried to run the hook and ladder, so they can't run that again. <laughs> and I don't think Sawyer Smith can throw the ball to the end zone, so it'll actually be really interesting to see what they come up with here. Chance poor. Tough night for him. That's a tough name for a kicker, too, by the way. Chance poor. not as good as our friend in uh, Chris blew it. Yeah. <laughs> in the Pittsburgh Clemson game. He didn't blow it, Chris. Yeah. He nailed it. <laughs> Unfortunately, poor did not. Two ticks. Sawyer Smith will have a lane to step into and lofts one and it will be intercepted. And that will do it. Kair Elam on the pick, zeros on the clock. Inexplicably, Florida outscores Kentucky 19 to nothing since Felipe Franks left the game with an injury. And we fear that Franks' season could be over. Down to Molly McGrath. Thank you, Steve. Coach. Coach. This night was full of adversity, a fourth quarter deficit. You guys were down. You lost one of your team leaders in Felipe Franks. What did you learn about your team in this one? Well, you know, I mean, we, we talked at halftime. We, things weren't always going our way. We weren't getting off the field on third down on defense. Uh, we made some mistakes, you know, some critical penalties on offense. Uh, but I don't have to. We got to believe we're going to win this game. The difference between this year and last year. I'm looking at the scoreboard. It's the exact same situation. Exact same situation as last year. We believe we're going to win the game, though, I think, this year. And, uh, and we found the way to make plays to win it there at the end. Offensively, defensively, everybody found a way to make a play to win the game there at the end. Your backup to your right here, Kyle Trask, came in for Felipe Franks. Yep. It was emotional for your team. What kind of composure did you see from your backup quarterback? Well, what we expect from them, you know what I mean? Everyone gets on you, who's this, who's that backup? You know, our job is to develop three starters. We have, we have, I think we have three starting quarterbacks in our room. Guys that work and prepare so they're ready to go. Kyle's waiting for his moment. He, we expect him, the team believes him. He's a, we think he's a starter just like uh, Felipe is. Came in here and showed and he played that way. And uh, I know the team, there was never a doubt when he came in that, that, that he could do the job. Uh, and he did, and a heck of a job by him. Really proud of him, I'm happy for him. You don't see this much, huh? No, you it's definitely a, it's don't. It's a tragedy in college football. They don't see guys like him grow, learn, develop, believe in their school. He's a graduate. See everybody transferring here, there, transfer there. Believe in what you do, your opportunity comes to take advantage of it. You grow, you learn, and now everybody got to see what type of quarterback we knew he was the whole time. All right, thank you, Coach. Congratulations on the win. I'm going to bring Kyle over here. Kyle, congratulations on the win. Your entire team was very emotional when Felipe went down. What was your mentality when you went in? Uh, it was obviously a really hard time for the team because he's a great leader for us. Um, but at the end of the day, we're, we're still here to win the game. And, you know, like Coach Mullen said, like, he prepares three starters. And it was just next man up mentality to get the job done. All right, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Steve, back to you. On backup quarterback night here in Lexington, Florida would have you believe that order has been restored in this rivalry. Florida defeats Kentucky 29 to 21. For producer Josh Hoffman, director Mike Schwab, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, Molly McGrath, fortunately there are no more names to say except mine, Steve Levy. That's it for now.